Many of the old stories about pressure canners exploding or pressure cookers exploding, and that's why your grandmother never wanted to use them again. Uh, we have safety measures in place now. Those don't happen. For example, here is the overpressure plug that comes with the Presto canner. And this little rubber plug, if it gets you know, to the point that the pressure is too high inside, will actually explode out and then the pressure will be released and it will be very exciting, but it won't be dangerous unless you stick your face in it. Don't stick your face in it. With the um, All-American, they also have the same kind of rubber, rubber plug and it, the same thing will happen. Here's the rubber plug on the American and it will, the rubber, gas, uh, rubber plug will come up, it will explode, and then everything, the pressure gets released, and eventually your heart starts beating at a normal rate, and you're just fine. All right, so we're going to go over the parts of your pressure canner. This is important to make sure that you know how to make sure your pressure canner is working the right way. So, the important part, here is your pressure gauge. This pressure gauge is important because you want to know how many pounds of pressure you've got. According to your altitude and your research-based recipe, it will tell you what altitude you have and you'll need. Higher altitudes are between 13 and 15 pounds of pressure, depending on how high your altitude is. Lower altitude sea level would be, do at least 10. So you want to know where that is. Uh, this, is, this happens to be an all-American lid. Okay, remember, you will need to check your pressure gauge every year because you want to make sure you've got the right pounds of pressure or you won't be able to have the right temperature inside of your pressure canner and things won't be safe. So make sure and get your pressure gauge tested. Um, the extension services usually will do that for you. So you have also a vent pipe on your the top of your lid. That vent pipe is important because that's where your pressure weight is going to go on. For the All-American, it's this kind of a weight. And for the Presto, which is another popular brand, it's either this kind of a weight or this kind of a weight. This one's 15 pounds already. This one has rings on it so that you can go down to five pounds if you're pressure cooking, 10 pounds if you're at sea level pressure canning, and 15 pounds if you are above 3,000 feet. All right, so now we're going to start doing some actual food. What we're going to do today is green beans. Green beans are very popular. Now, there are a couple of things that you need when you're going to do pressure canning or when you're going to do any kind of canning. Number one, for pressure canning, make sure you've got the instruction manuals. You can get these online. You can do this. Make sure you've got them. It will tell you where everything is on your pressure canner. You need that. Make sure you've got it. The other thing that you've got to get is research-based recipes. We've got So Easy to Preserve out of the University of Georgia Extension. They also run the National Center for Home Food Preservation site. All of those are safe. These are research-based recipes that have been tested over and over again, not just for how good it tastes, but to make sure it doesn't get botulism, to make sure it's safe to eat. And extensive testing. Ball Canning also has done extensive testing that they've shared with the USDA. So we know that these two sources are safe. This is the Complete Guide to Home Canning out of the USDA. All of this is online. Ball Canning is online too with FreshPreserving.com. But USDA, National Center for Home Food Preservation, you know, it's all online and it's free to download. So. Make sure you've got a research-based recipe. Make sure you've got the instruction manual for your, your pressure canners. Once again, the electric pressure canners at this time do not have enough research done that shows that they can keep and maintain the types of temperatures that you need to kill the botulism spores. 
They're inconsistent in their al at the altitudes that we tested in Utah. With your pressure cooker, or a pressure canner, pardon me, a pressure cooker is not a pressure canner. Pressure canner is a separate size and it has different capabilities. Pressure canner, you have to have a rack in the bottom because you don't want direct pressure on your glass. Uh, so we will put the rack in the bottom. This is the big Presto that I have. And you put two to three inches of water in it. Follow your manufacturer's advice. The Presto says to put three quarts of water in the bottom of your pressure canner. So three quarts of water ends up being about two inches of water. What a surprise. So you need the water, but you don't want to do like a water bath because the water bath gets all the way over and you need one to two inches of water over your cans. But then you won't be able to get any pressure. So you have to have just two to three inches of water because it's cooked and the temperature comes from the steam, not the water below it. The water below provides the steam. Okay, so research-based recipes, instructions for your canner, now you've got your food. All right, so my pressure canner is now on the stove where the water is starting to heat up some. You don't want to get it boiling yet. You want to get it to be just under a simmer, you know, kind of just, just warm, you know, uh, so that you can get your beans going. All right, so we're going to do a raw pack green bean. Raw pack means that you've got the green beans not blanched, not cooked. They're just washed and ready to go. And a hot pack would mean that you would cook your product first and put it in your hot jar and then add a hot liquid to it. With the raw pack, you put it in your jar without cooking it first and then you add boiling water to it because you've still got to have some heat in there. So I'm going to just get these to a good size for eating. And pack them neatly in the jar. Sometimes I pack neater than other times. It depends on how much I care. It doesn't matter particularly on the size, except that you want to make sure that you've got an inch head space. So some of these are too long, so I would cut them down. And then have the nice long ones on the outside, and then the shorter ones hidden in the middle, so that they, it makes an impressive looking jar. Either way, it'll taste the same. All right, once you have your jars packed, you need to, you can add salt if you want. Salt would be an option. It's not a preservative at this. And you will take boiling water and pour it to your inch headspace. Check to make sure that you don't have any bubbles. need to readjust that inch. You can do that. This looks about fine. Put your lid on. Well, you can wipe it off first with a clean paper towel. Put your lid on. Finger tight and stick it in your can. All right, so this is what the green beans look like. You get them in your canner. And then you'll notice there's an arrow on this one. And you can't see it very well, but there's an arrow right there as well. You need to get those on in alignment. Right, you're going to start it at a fairly high temperature, and that's what is going to start building up the steam inside. All right, so 
Now you're seeing the venting. You can see a solid column of steam most of the time. Your cover lock is up so you know for sure you're getting a solid column. Sometimes you'll get a solid column before the cover lock comes up, most of the time not. So now is the time you hit your timer for 10 minutes. Our pressure gauge has started. We're going to put the weight on there. This is the 15 pound weight for the Presto. If you have the All-American, you would put it on the 15 pound weight here that is marked for this hole as opposed to the 5 or the 10 pounds. These are for lower altitudes. Utah has to be 15 for the weights. Now you're going to watch your gauge and let it build the pressure up. As it starts building close to, you can go 13 to 15 pounds when you are at Utah County altitudes of 4,500 feet. So you watch this to make sure that uh, you don't start your timing until it gets to at least 13 pounds of pressure. All right, so you can see that the gauge is between 13 and 14 pounds of pressure. You could actually start your timing now, but I don't like to start too close to the 13 because if you go below 13 at all, you have to start your timing all over again. So I usually pressure can mine at between 14 and 15 pounds of pressure. At this point, because the pressure has been going up, you can now start turning down your heat and watch your pressure gauge to see where you're at and turn it down and make sure you've got a stable pressure going. You can see that the weight is rocking right now. So my gauge is about a half pound light and my weight is telling me that it's at 15 pounds of pressure. So now I can start my timing. My research based recipe says 20 minutes for pints. Now that my time has started, it's my turn to get a really boring book so that I stay in the kitchen watching the gauge to make sure it doesn't go below that 14 pounds or 15 pounds that I've decided it needs to be at. And I can monitor it. So you get a really boring book. So you can read and then, oh, look at it, read and look at it, and read and look at it. All right. Our 20 minute, minutes at pressure are up, and I'm going to turn off my timer. I'm also going to turn off my heat, and I don't touch anything else. If you have an electric stove, then you can gently scoot it off onto something else so that it'll cool it down. Now we just wait. It's 5.35 on my clock here. And I will show you what happens when it finally gets down to a natural cool down where you can take it and open it up. So it's 6.15. It has finally gotten down to zero on the pressure gauge. But the cover lock is still up, so I still can't open it. I have to wait until that cover lock goes down. down. Once the cover lock is down, you can open it up. But it's really hot in there, so make sure you open it away from yourself. Now we'll let it cool for about 10 minutes before we take it out of the canner itself. Okay, so now we're ready to finally take them all the way out and put them on a tray to cool off just like you would if you were water bath canning. And you leave them there for 12 to 24 hours without disturbing them. You don't touch the tops because that could accidentally give you a false seal. And after 24 hours you can take off the rings and wash them and put them away and know that you've got a safe product to eat.